welcome to the Israel First television program from our studios in Jerusalem. Uh, I'm Martin Blackham. I'm here with my wife, Natalie Blackham, and we're bringing you news and updates from the land of Israel. We're going to go straight into the news because there's so much happening and so many things that you need to know uh, that's happening in the land of Israel. The first story is um, Israel Ynet recently reported that a Palestinian terrorist shot and killed a border police officer and two civilian security guards and seriously wounded another Israeli near the Jewish community of Haradar. Israel's National Ambulance and Emergency Service, Magan David Adam, paramedics treated the three fatally wounded members of the Israeli security forces in their 20s and 30s, but had to pronounce them dead at the scene. The Israeli border policeman was identified as Staff Sergeant Solomon Gaviria, who was 20 years old from Bir Yaakov. Gaviria joined the border police just 18 months ago. He was he survived by his parents and three siblings, the two security guards. But he was Ethiopian. Which he is was important. Ethiopian, yes. Yeah. You're right, Natalie. Uh, the two security guards were or Arish, age 25, he's actually from Haradar, and Yosef Otman, age 25, from Abu Ghosh. Military security coordinator Amit Steinhardt, 33, of Haradar, was also seriously wounded in the attack. He was operated on at the Hadassah Medical Center and, and was recovering from serious injuries. The attack took place while security forces were opening the Haradar border gate to Palestinians who were ne uh, nearing the checkpoint in the early morning when one ar aroused the suspicion of the border police and civil security guards. The security then initiated the suspect arrest protocol and ordered him to stop. When the terrorist realized he'd been discovered, he opened his shirt, drew a gun and fired at the guards and policemen at short range. He then shot dead the border policemen. This happened all about 350 meters from where we're doing the uh, program today. So. Um, just a terrible event and so close to to where we are Natalie and really the community around us uh, in the area where we are filming are in shock and there's also anger because these Palestinian workers were coming here and were employed they were trusted to you know take care of um, of work in the area and trusted to work in people's homes so really a shock for the community Natalie and, and what is interesting is that he was uh, the, the terrorist was uh, Palestinian, so he's like uh, Arab Muslim. But the amazing thing, the, the three people who were helping us and like guarding our place, one is, as you say, a border a policeman, and he was Ethiopian, so he, he, he emigrated here with his family, and he was just 20. And there was two others, one who was a Jewish man, who was, his family was from Morocco, so they were again from an Arabic country before, and they came to, to live here in Harda. And the other one was a Muslim uh, Israeli who was helping. He was just, uh, is, it was one of our security offices. So you can imagine the shock. Officers. Sorry, officers. The shock, I mean, no, security guard, mm -hmm. sorry. Se security guard, because uh, when, when you have, um, when you have a village like that who is in the Palestinians' authority territories, uh, uh, I would say, on the other side of the Green Line, which is, as we, for us, is Israel, but there is all these political things going on. And so uh, we have some our own security guards to look after our community. And after you have the, the police, um, border police, the border police which is looking after the border between uh, the territories and Israel land. It's, it's a bit complicated when you well, don't know all the things. Right. I but think it's, it's very the important. E right. The, the easiest way, Natalie, of explaining it is that uh, all of the land is Israel. But uh, because of the, war, of the wars in, and the war of independence, Jordan invaded and took over land in what the... Um, media called the West Bank, mm -hmm. but there are Jewish people indeed where we're, the studio today is, according to the mass media, is in the West Bank, but it's Judea and Samaria. So we have and these they took it back in uh, 1967, right. but they, have, they didn't really ratify the saying this is right. ours. So, yeah. so just c 
you, just uh, to explain for the folks, you know, these are Arab villages or towns which are in Israel, mm -hmm. but because of the politics, the they have different. They, they, you know, the they're called. Some of them are called under the Palestinian Authority. But we have to have security um, for the neighborhood, not because of crime, but because of the threat of terror. Mm -hmm. Because uh, um, before the security fence, before the wall, we had in Israel, there was a terror terrorists coming from Arab villages, from mainly from the Palestinian area, but also from other Arab mm -hmm. places in Israel. Um, and coming across into Israel, and uh, there was the, particularly, many of you may have seen, the suicide bombers on buses, suicide attacks, etc., that were happening in, um, a terror attacks that were happening in Israel. So the security fence was constructed to stop uh, terrorists accessing uh, Israel. Uh, you can come into Israel, it's not like you can't, but there's a, there's a checkpoint and the soldiers check that uh, you know that you're there for legitimate business and that you're not a, a, a known terrorist. So th this is the, so for our so cutting a long story short for our community, we have security to prevent terror, and it's exactly that that they prevented because yes. they and they gave their lives yes. to to prevent uh, what could have been a, 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 a serious terror attack in our community. Um, it's them who took the blunt of, of what rather, was happening. Right, rather than the terrorists getting into Haradar or indeed in any Jewish Now community. the thing, the thing also, the one who was uh, uh, hurt and went to have an, a surgery, uh, emergency obviously surgery in uh, Hadassah in the hospital, he's back at home now, but he was telling the story that his other friend was looking at him and and he tackled the, the terrorists. They really, I, I tell you, there is this, uh, this is our heroes. And he tackled the terrorists knowing that he had to do something. And he looked at his other friend, the security guard, and, and, and because he knew that he needed to have some time to be able to neutralize the terrorists. And he saw in his eyes, okay, I'm giving my life, do, do the job that you have to do. And this is what uh, the, the security guard who now is back at home uh, was saying, and and some people say, "Are you afraid to be here?" And he's like, "No, I'm not afraid to be here." First of all, uh, I mean, we were shaken, like I didn't shake like that, but my body inside was shaking, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" And 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 it helped because we we've done some interviews on the radio, Martin on one and me on another one, so it, it helps to speak, and we can see things, and and you need to be aware of all the things that's happening here because there is a, a very big difference between the, the Palestinians, the one who are under the Palestinian Authority, because when they do an act of terror, they will be looked as heroes. First of all, sometimes they will have streets who are put with the names and the family, they are like a special status and the, thing, the status and and the thing now, these terrorists had four kids, and now the four kids are going to receive some money all their lives. And the money comes from the taxpayer from Europe, from America, and, and so people need to know that. And, and we, we need, it's not just a problem of Israel, it's an international problem. Now when the, um, when the Arabs, Muslim, who are killing people who are in Israel, in the land of Israel, they won't have any of, the, of this money. So they are thinking twice about when they do things. Obviously, sometimes they want to kill their Jews because this is how they have been brought up. But like the one in the Palestinian Authority, they know that the money, they will be rewarded for what so, they've done. So uh, what you need to do is to contact your uh, government, uh, wherever you're watching yeah. today, contact your government, contact, if you're in the United States, for example, contact your senator or governor and put forward that the Palestinian Authority shouldn't receive money be because they're, they're using that money to pay terrorists. And, think, and the event like that happened in Haradar, not far from our studio, uh, is subsidized, is paid for by money from different Western countries. And this can stop. This would okay, might not stop everything, but it's a huge 
If, these, if this money wasn't paid, it would be a huge change uh, in the Palestinian Authority. Um, and it's, it's because of people paying in the West to the Palestinian Authority, thinking that they're helping refugees, thinking it's going for food, thinking that it's going to help people when it's misused. And it's not that they shouldn't receive any money, but the money should, they are accountable for that money, and the money should be used uh, not for uh, funding terrorism, but to build schools, uh, etc. Now, the but, and when, when not only that, when you think and really look, because when ha this happened to us, you know, you have a lot of thoughts coming in your mind. I'm like, okay, we have the responsibility if we are Europeans, if we are Americans, and the countries. I don't know all the countries who are giving for the Palestinian Authority. Obviously, there is also all the Arab country, and like the people who don't want to see that. We is our responsibility because we are our brother's keeper. And it's very important that we do things and saying, if we don't do it, we'll have the blood of Jews on our hands. And we do not want that. So it's very important. And there is people now who does some, um, there is more, um, you campaigns. know, uh, that's it, campaigns that you can do if you are like a group of people or you are, with a, with a big uh, organization, you can really make a difference, and every one of us can make a difference. So if you're watching today and you want to get involved in that, you say, uh, Martin and Natalie, we, we want to do something to stop what's happening, then please do email us. It's info at israelfirst.org, and you can, um, we'll put you in touch with the organizations who are, that we know. Uh, who are campaigning and fighting for this particular issue of terrorists being paid. Now, uh, we like to do, one of the things we like to do, Natalie, on the program is to do a, a, a newspaper review. This is the Jerusalem Post, and you can see uh, we've got, as well as the Jerusalem March, which we may mention at some stage, we've also got the a title that says, Lieberman, who is the defense minister, says, Hezbollah has swallowed up Lebanese army. Hezbollah has swallowed up the Lebanese army. And Israel's defense minister, Avidor Lieberman says, Hezbollah ter terror group has swallowed up Lebanese army. The future war in the north, that's the north of Israel, would involve Sy both Syria and Lebanon, Lieberman warns. Le the Lebanon's army has become an integral part of Hezbollah's terror network, according to Israeli Defense Minister Avidor Lieberman, who warned that the next war on the on the northern border will not be confined to one front, but rather see a, a, a double front with both Syria and Lebanon involved. Addressing soldiers at the Kiria military headquarters in Tel Aviv, Lieberman warned that preparation for the next war was of great importance because it will li be likely to include the Lebanese military along with Hezbollah. We're talking about Hezbollah and the Lebanese military, and unfortunately this is the reality, he said adding that the Lebanese army has lost its independence and become an integral part of Hezbollah's terror network. Now, what you may not know, because we have these terms and uh, uh, many of you may not know who Hezbollah are, well, Hezbollah is one of the most active Islamic terrorist organizations in the world. They've been they're built a global network of terror. They've been involved in suicide bombings, plane hijackings, assassinations, weapon smuggling, and firing rockets at civilians. Since 1982, hundreds of innocent civilians have lost their lives, Natalie, and thousands more have, be have been injured by, the terror by this terrorist group. And um, I believe I was looking in the news that even on the FBI most wanted list, it's, uh, two Hezbollah terrorists are on there. And what Lieberman's warning is that Leb Leb the Lebanese army was the army to of protect the country. of the country to yeah. protect Lebanon has been taken over slowly, slowly during the civil war in Syria. Uh, which many of you may know about because of the terrible bombings and starvation and all sorts of issues that have been on your TV screen. But Hezbollah is really a threat now in the north of Israel and is, 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 is taking over uh, the Lebanese army. So this is something that, um, Important. That, that has been warned about. Now, one of the things that's been in the news and we've talked about is uh, the visit of uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu to different countries. And... Um, He's recently been visit, he recently visited for the first time South America, and in particular, his first ever visit to Mexico. Which was the first time that the Prime Minister from Israel went to South 
uh, South America, America yes. which was as a, big, a sitting prime a very minister. Big thing, yes. The 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 uh, president of um, Israel has been to South America, but never a sitting prime minister. And uh, it says the Jerusalem Post says on his first ever visit to Mexico, Prime Minister Netanyahu began by visiting two business events in Mexico City and said that it was not a coincidence that he opened his visit by meeting some of the country's most influential businessmen since the thrust of his time there was trade and investment. Netanyahu said Mexico is an economic power, one of the 12 largest economies in the world, and it can go higher. We have to be here and have to be here in a big way in Mexico. Following the meeting with businessman, Netan uh, following the meeting with businessman Netanyahu went on to meet with Mexican President Enrique Pene Nieto and said that the focus of that meeting also would be business. And, you know, we were talking a bit about the pressures that Netanyahu is having and the and the uh, attacks of the left wing and it's in, the land. I, in Israel. And it's interesting that he's, one of, he's somebody who's going out of his way to help Israel to make business because, you know, an economy can't survive in a vacuum. Just as in the United Kingdom with Brexit, the, the, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom is having to go outside of, it, of the United Kingdom to, to gain business. So Netanyahu is now having to go and uh, he's done amazing things this year. He's been in Africa twice. He's been in South America. He's been in Australia he, and, and also the European countries and all of that. And he's, he's just amazing. He had like uh, the Modi, the prime minister of India for three days and they were together. So it's not just business, but it's like really builti building a network. And you have to understand when you speak about all of that, as it is like around Sukkot right now, is like Sukkot is not just a Jewish festival, is a, is a festival of, of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, and very much turn for also that the nations will come. And, and what Netanyahu is doing uh, is like proactive and not just staying in his land and making, he knew that it was important at the beginning. But the, the point is that he's going out of his way to build, to help build the economy and when things start to happen people forget they forget that the prime minister made an effort to go out and to uh, attract commerce and israel whilst there are there is terror and it's true israel is a, a strong has a strong economy um, has a lot of research and development we have um, amazon who are opening up uh, f research and development for their uh, for their um, Demand mm -hmm. uh, Alexa, I think it's called the um, the, the uh, thing that you speak to and it orders things. That's going to be developed here in the land of Israel. We've also got uh, Alibaba from China. That's a whole huge, gigantic website who are opening up research and development in Tel Aviv. So you know the economy is changing massively. Yes, and when people come here, because again the media, this is all like doing another work and breaking what the negative media uh, about Israel. He's like bringing some business he's, and businessmen, they are not silly, they are very serious. They can see that the Israel is serious, Israel is, is really doing great. And when we see tourists here, every time that we see them, they say, oh, he's changing, oh, there is more and more buildings. And there is a funny joke, which is what is the famous uh, birds in Israel? You know what is the most famous bird in Israel? Is the crane, because they are building so many uh, buildings. Is the crane, and is is the name also of a bird? Yeah, so and uh, the whole the the there's the we've talked about this on um, on on our other programs where the road network into Jerusalem. The, there's a new train being uh, being just finished, which uh, you may get if you come here. You may get to travel on it, and it will take you. 30 minutes, I believe, from 28, 28 minutes from um, uh, Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, which will revolutionize uh, the speed. People, if people can travel around more easily, transport changes everything. If you have a very good infrastructure in your country, and maybe you're watching today and you don't have that, but when you have that, we take it a bit for granted, but commerce flows from infrastructure. And, and not only that, I was reading a beautiful passage which is written, when you will come back in your land, I will make you even more numerous and prosperous. Prosper? Prosperous. 
And this is in Deuteronomy. And now we see it. We, we were again in Sukkot and there is more time of traveling and we went up north uh, of Israel. And you should see, Mart, also the roads, they are getting bigger. And Israel doesn't want only people around Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, but they are really making now the peripheric, uh, or the north and the south now, they are really making uh, the roads, again, as you said, much better. So people can go to live over there and travel for their work. You know, they are training ready to work very hard that the country will have uh, a population everywhere in the country because there is some places very, uh, area very populated and some more or less. So they are really trying to, to make the people going uh, outside of Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. And we can see the roads, it's just amazing. And the train, I saw the train whizzing and I say, wow, it's, it's just amazing. And uh, um, some of you who, who have been um, wondering, you know, about uh, we've been here now doing Israel First for one year. Mm -hmm. So for some of you wondering a, a bit of the background of um, Israel First, uh, we started a year ago and uh, we are covering news and doing interviews. Get, we're getting different guests on who will help you to understand what's happening in the land. Now, one of the things that we've been developing and working on is the website because this is a, a resource. I realize that some of you may not have access, but uh, you can perhaps go to a library or ask a relative to print off information if you need it. But on the website, we now have uh, a lot of information. We've, uh, there's a news story, daily news story on there. There's uh, access to the television programs. We're also doing podcasts, Natalie. We've got, um, you can listen to the, maybe you can't watch the program, but in your car, you could listen to a podcast. And uh, as you go to work or, in fact, it was a friend of ours who, wanted to listen to the program as you went to work. And so we have a podcast on that's on, um, I believe that's on the media button on the website. You'll see that uh, there's also a, um, a information about the guests that we have. Or maybe you've, you've seen the program, you thought, I'd love to know more about a guest, particular guests. We have uh, information about the guests on, uh, how to contact us. And um, at the end of the day, we have the, of course, the donate button, which is so important to us because it's because of your support that we're able to be here in the studio and come to you from the land of Israel in this important hour, bringing news and interviews and features from Israel and teaching from, the, from Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And it's really to, to make you knowing what's happening here in Israel. It's so important to see it's growing, it's changing all the time. And you, w we do things about the Hebrew language. We do things, like you say, like politically, but we're going to do a, a beautiful uh, uh, program about the Bible and like looking at where was Israel compared to Assyria and Egypt. So it, it, it gave us an understanding of the Bible. We're going to do something about Africa because Israel is going to Africa, bringing the light, bringing water. And uh, because people are concerned here in Israel for the welfare of the world and with the welfare of Africa. And, uh, you know, it's very easy to support us. Uh, we have a uh, bank order form that you can get hot that we'll send out to you. We can email it to you. Uh, there's a donate button with PayPal. You just go onto the website and you can go uh, and uh, donate. And it's important that you stand with us. You, know, you may think, well, I want to do something. I've watched the program today. And I really feel challenged that I should do something to help Israel first, to help get the news out, the good news from Israel and what's really happening in the land. So, you know, it's all there on the website. If you haven't got that, ask a friend to print it off for you. You know, you can write to us. You can. Um, you can uh, ask us to send you the, in the post the um, information how to donate to us and we'll send that into the post to you. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's because of your support that we're able to bring you this program from the land of Israel and we look forward to seeing you next week. Shalom dear friends, wonderful to be with you today. And you know, we look at the Aleph Bet of the, the Hebrew language like the alphabet, we look at all the letters, we l learn a lot of things, and you can pick them up again on our YouTube channel in, uh, from Israel First, and you can relearn if you want, or look at them again, and show it to your friends. But now we are starting to take few verses in the Bible, in this next section, and we will learn through these verses. So today we look at the very first 
a verse in Genesis, which is, uh, we'll read it in, in, uh, in Hebrew, and we will say it after in English, okay? So in Hebrew is Bereshit bara Elohim et Ashamahim vet Aaretz, which is Bereshit at the beginning, bara Elohim, God cre uh, created, et Ashamahim, he created the, the heavens, ve et Aaretz, he created the earth. So it's like the Hebrew language is so beautiful that like when you read Bereshit, Reshit is the beginning, but if you remember, we learned that there is root word, and in this Reshit, the root word is Rosh. So when we speak about the beginning, we speak about like also the head. And when you think at the concept, when something has to start, very often it starts, um, all the time, it starts by thoughts. So at the beginning, God thinking, and after he created and he created Shamaim, which is the heavens, and he created the earth, Aaretz. And Bara also, the name for creating, is very interesting because you look at the name Bara, at the end there is a Aleph, and the Aleph is representing God, so we see that at the end, he created the things for his enjoyment and to enjoy uh, a relationship with his creation and to enjoy a relationship with us and with him. So this is already in this one very first verse in um, Bereshit, which means Genesis 1.1. Isn't it amazing? We can learn so many things with the Hebrew language. I encourage you to learn more at home and we'll carry on next week. See you, bye. Thank you so much for joining us today for this special Israel First update. Don't forget to email us. We love to receive your emails at info at israelfirst.org. Visit the website www.israelfirst.org. And remember, we're the program that looks at the land, the people and the language. <laughs>